All right, here we go. We are gonna get started right now with a live 20 minute walk. So here's what I want you to be thinking. You can do this anywhere. Really, you can do it in the space of about four square feet, a little bit forward, a little bit backward, a little bit to the side. So if I take wider movement, you don't have to go that way. So you can exercise anywhere, anytime, hotel room, at home, small apartment building, closet at your in-laws. You got this. We're going to get started right now. And let me know how you're feeling afterward. I'd love to hear from you and love it if you would share this, if you have the ability to do it. Talk a little bit about our Flipping 50 membership. All right. So I'm going to remove my yoga mat. The yoga studio is officially closed. We're going to start right now with an easy march. Making sure that you are coming all the way through your foot can be really important. So the little things do matter. And you want to make sure that you're kind of going toe ball heel and then toe ball heel down and pushing off heel ball toe. So make it a little bit more emphasis on what's happening through your foot as you warm up. So that can be really key. Okay. And I realize some of you have a big shot at the living room ceiling. <laughs> All right. But what I want you to do is to focus on your feet. So as we're in the first few minutes of walking here in your living room or in my entryway, so I'm looking right outside at the pool. In fact, just FYI, I have the doors open because it's cooler outside than it is indoors this morning, which is a nice little reprieve in Scottsdale in the end of May, shall we say. All right. We'll warm those feet up, and I'm going to have you take that warm-up for the feet a little bit further. So what I want you to do is just take your heels, and you're going to touch every step when you're ready. Move into that. While you're doing this, what I want you to think is not just touching that heel now. I really want you to think about pull your toe back. Pull your toe back toward your chin. And what we're doing here is waking up the muscle in the front of the shin. There isn't a lot there. It's called your anterior tibialis. And when you think about the balance between the muscle in the front of your shin and the muscle in the back of your leg or your calf, obviously, major difference, right? But if you also imagine, what do your parents or your grandparents look like as they walk? Most of them, older adults, tend to shuffle they tend to have that senior shuffle, we call it, keeping feet in contact with the ground. They go a little bit wider with their stance, and then they're moving along here because they don't want to fall. It's just Mother Nature's way of saying, you know, here's what you can do to give yourself a bigger base of support, make you feel more stable. Now, when you see that, what you need to know is there's a lot of things that can happen that contribute to that, but one of them is actually starting right now for all of us. Your ankles can lose range of motion and degenerate. And that is an age-related challenge that can get worse if you say you've done a lot of high-impact exercise. Maybe it was basketball, maybe it was running, maybe it was soccer, maybe it was all of the above, lots of jumping. And over time, your ankles sustained a lot of trauma. If you um, are heavier significantly, your ankles supported all that weight and they have, bone density is not a problem for you. It never is if you're highly overweight, generally. So let's say if you're taking certain medications, it can be. But we lose range of motion in the ankle joint, meaning all of those little bones, and there are a lot, begin to fuse together if we don't use them. So we're still pulling that toe back up, by the way. Do not get lazy here. And so we lose the ability to do this, and pretty soon your range of motion is not what it used to be. So if you sit on the floor with your legs straight out and you try to pull your toes back, you should have some flexion. You should not be at 90 degrees. You should be able to pull them backward. And the more you can do that and point your toe like further this way, the better off you are. So, but it is this one pulling the toe back 
that is really important. I'm just going to have you take it out here to the side. And what I want you to do is try to put the inside of your foot on the floor, both the toe and the heel. So you're going to have to bend this standing leg. And we're just getting a little bit more ankle pull. Pull the outside ridge of your foot toward you and your face. So we're strengthening the outside of the ankle a little bit here. Now I'm going to have you do the opposite and touch right in front of you. Now, if we're going to sprain an ankle, most of us, this is where we're going to do it. This is how we do it. We land on the side of our foot and then we roll out. So it's those ligaments that tend to get overstretched. And if you overstretch them time and time again, that may always be a weak link. That doesn't mean we can we can't strengthen the ankle again and make stability more of a goal, but often we don't do it. We finish rehab, the swelling goes down, we are able to walk in the cute shoes again, and we forget. We need to be paying attention to that ankle some more, right? So don't spend a lot of time on this one because I don't want you to get too good at that, okay? Good, I'm gonna have you actually take that foot in off the floor. Sometimes when we'll do a kickboxing workout, we're not going there today, so don't panic. We have you push the bottom of your foot forward. Part of that is because we want to work the leg differently in a kick for a proper kick, but it is also a wonderful work and adjunct for your ankle and those muscles in your shins. So if you started walking more in the last eight weeks since COVID started. No matter when you're watching this, if you started walking more or you start walking and you're going uphill more, you may come back and think, oh my gosh, I have shin splints. What you do have is probably muscle fatigue right up here because you're not used to walking that fast, pulling your toe up so you don't trip. And especially if you start going uphill, you have to do that even more. That is simply muscle fatigue in a muscle group that's not used to doing it. So if you're only walking, shin splints are really very rare from walking. So if you're doing a lot of running and you've dialed that up without any progression from starting here to going to here to going to here to going to here, you also may then be more prone to shin splints. But I've had people begin just, I'm going to have you march again, begin, say, walking on a treadmill and begin using the incline and then tell me after one session, short session, I have shin splints. And I've got to tell you, probably you don't. <laughs> you just have used some muscle that haven't been used for a long time. So what you can do is ice those shins. You can foam roll those shins or take your rolling pin and roll them up and down. It's like a massage and soak in Epsom salt and keep doing it. But don't do it five days in a row. Don't go from 10 minutes to 20 to 30 to an hour. So you've got to really be smart with progression and the way you get started. All right, so your feet, your ankles should be just a little bit warmer now. So I'm gonna have you keep that walk going. This is kind of a low to moderate workout for today. That's all we're doing. So this is not really a power workout. This is not really power movement, but just a good way to get started. You're at home. You maybe don't feel the mojo to go out on your own, or maybe it's 105 degrees. I know that feeling. And middle of the day is the first time you've had the chance. You don't want to go out there. Do it inside. Do it where you're a little bit more comfortable. Likewise, in the middle of winter. I know you too. <laughs> I've done all those extremes. When it's not comfortable, it's 20 below. Here's a good mojo for you. We're gonna do a walk, and I'm gonna give you a little bit of rhythm to make your brain think. Want you to go one, two, three, and touch. One, two, three, and touch. So it's one, two, three, and one, two, three. You can keep that going and just do it on your own speed. So we're not going the exact same speed, and certainly there's no music, and I'll tell you why. So the music that I have the rights to use is terrible, right? So I prefer not to. I prefer to have you go ahead and put your own music in the background so you can still hear me as loudly as you want to, 
And that way it's not my taste of music that interferes with your enjoyment of the activity, but you need to hear the details of this. Now I want you to notice what I'm doing. I'm moving around a little. Remember, if you're in this four by four cubicle and you don't have space to move, you don't have to. But if you can, we'll just increase the work through the foot by not doing it all in place. We'll go backward and forward. So I'm walking back, back, front and touch. One, two, three, and touch. Backward and forward, backward and forward. And that also engages your core a little bit more. So you're gonna to reach with your tailbone, backward and forward. Don't overdo it. You should be aware of your core, but nothing negative happening in your lower back. And then let's talk arms, okay? So if you are working just a little bit harder, and I want you to be in this place where you could talk to me. Be nice, right? I like this, right? feel good. Then you're just letting those arms swing. So if you go for a walk and you naturally let your arms swing, you're walking at a comfortable pace, but not in a hurry, not trying to get your heart rate up. You let your arms do this, long arms, swinging naturally. Now, if you want to go faster, you start flexing those elbows and you drive the arms to drive the speed of the legs. When you want to go uphill, and you don't necessarily want to go faster, but you have to put in more effort not to go slower. What should happen is this, that you're really pushing. But are you noticing this? I'm gonna stay in the middle here. My arms are not pressing my body. You absolutely want to avoid that because you've just wasted all of the energy that you're getting going forward if you're outside by pressing. So you have forward, and then you have a cross. And that just doesn't work. So we want the energy all going in the same direction, reach. So those arms swing forward with your fist and knuckles reaching out here, and with your elbows, equal and opposite reaction going behind you. Your shoulder should not be up here. Your neck should be very relaxed because you're letting those arms swing like a pendulum right here. Good. Now let's do just a little bit more. We'll dial it up. It's more than we would have wanted to do at the beginning because we weren't warm yet, but we are now. So we're going to raise instead of a touch to any lift. So it's one, two, three, and up. And up. Three. So you should be breathing a little bit harder than when you started, especially if you started on the couch. And I hope you're not sitting there with a cup of coffee watching. You're actually doing with me, promise, right? And I know for some of you, this is middle of the day. You are showered. You smell better than I do right now. And this is going to be tomorrow. Or file that away so that you can come back to it whenever you want to. Good. All right. Now, I'm going to take this up a little higher. We're going to do knees every time, but we'll do four more. Just like this. Three more. And two. And then knees every time. Up and up. So this is really like a march, nothing more. So the bar came from Truman. We all know him. He's feeling pretty good today. It was cooler in the morning, so he thought I was going to take him for a walk. And I'm not sure he wanted to, but he thought I was going to. So at 12 and a half, sometimes he gets a little break. He'll probably need to go around the block once, and that'll be about all we'll get. But uh, it's better than nothing. All right? Good. Notice this. So if it's my right knee, it's my left arm. That's how you walk. So we're just taking natural movements, taking them a little bit further. Good. Now, check in. Don't know about you, but I can already feel this in my hip flexors. And that's partially because our hip flexors are tight, but not strong necessarily. And that can be true of our hamstrings as well. <laughs> Tight, don't confuse for strong. We're gonna take those down to heels, so it's a little more comfortable, and then we're actually going to even that out to the back 
want you to march in place right now. Just go. Good. All right. I'm going to turn to the side just so you can see literally what's happening here. So I'm going to lean forward very slightly because I'm going to touch my toes behind. We're going to do one, two, three, and touch. Walk, 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 touch. One, two, three. Good. Now, if you have your hands on your hips, you should feel like you're doing a little bracing. Like your core has to stop and pause and contract to touch behind you because that's probably feeling very awkward. What we're doing is hip extension. One of the only times we can count on, we always do that, is getting up out of a chair. We do it probably dozens, you may do it hundreds of times all day and not really realize you do squats. <laughs> but this, kind of putting it back there, one at a time, feels a little different, right? So singles, take them all back, reach and reach and reach. So the point here is that when I have that leg back, if I were to pause and freeze frame, from the top of my head back to that heel is a straight line. Reach and reach. And my core stays here. It's doing bracing. This is actually a good core exercise. Your core is supposed to stabilize, keep you still while you're moving your arms and your legs. Unfortunately, a lot of times we've gotten carried away with planks and we do them forever or longer. Must be better, right? It's not. Doing short holds of planks while you're moving your arms and legs so much better. So once you can do 30 seconds, don't fool yourself into thinking if you can hold it for two minutes with a, I think one of the records here on YouTube is eight minutes. That is not better. That does not make you more fit. <laughs> you can still have a lot of weaknesses and not necessarily be better off. So here's where we're going. You've got to touch. We're going to take it to the side and touch and touch and touch. Now, I'm going to play with that a little bit. So I'm going to rotate a bit as well. So walking, right, quote unquote, here, we get when you're at home, you get much more variety in your movement. So if you do this walking down the street, I guarantee you, you're either going to make new friends or alienate them. <laughs> One of the two, all right? And I think about that, thinking I was raised in a very small town in the middle of the Midwest, in the middle of a state, in the middle of the Midwest. Doing this down the street would get you definitely some attention. Not necessarily the kind you want. All right, here's where I'm gonna go next. You're gonna go single, single, two times over here. Single, single, two times. Over here. Now, in order to do this really well, this bent leg or the standing leg, I gave it away, has to be bent. You're gonna go single and single and two. Good. Now you can rotate that a little more and two. So it's almost feeling like you're going backwards and two. Single, single and double back. Go single, single and double back. Good, now you can let your arms go. And you may not have thought you wanted to do that because maybe thinking, oh, I'm not coordinated. But your arms are actually kind of wanting to do it. Holding them still is more effort than letting them go with a flow twice. Single, single, and two. You got this. We're gonna do this one more time. And then we're gonna march in place right here. Good, great job. All right, lots of things going on, right? I'm gonna have you take your feet wide apart. We're just gonna keep that, making sure that your weight is coming to your heels, all right? And I want you to take a side step. So when you're walking, we did a little rotation here. We touched the toes out to the side, but we don't do lateral work. And, you know, a lot of us haven't done that since we were kids. Some of the weakest muscles that we get as adults in our 50s and 60s and older are the side hips. So those muscles are actually called your glute or gluteus medius. Moving side to side can help. The only time you fire that thing is when you're on one leg. So as I'm here standing on that leg, drawing it 
the other leg over, I'm working it. Same thing when you're walking forward. When you're on that one-legged stance, when you're doing tree pose in yoga, you're working that muscle. When you're doing a single leg lunge or those kinds of strength training exercises, this can be really good. But I want you to keep this feeling. And I just let that toe out there. So instead of bringing it together to touch, I'm just touching here. Now, I'm going to change that again and just raise that a couple inches off the floor, but not a lot. So I don't want you to tip over. I just want you to start standing legs working, but so is this external leg, the one that's lifting. So we're getting a little lateral work in both sides, and that's easy, good? So walking at home is not necessarily just a shortcut and an easier way. It can be a really great way. The one thing you are missing is just nature, right? So do get outside some. This might be a great warm up, right? Now your joints have moved forward, backwards, side to side, rotated a bit, and you might be ready to take a 20 minute walk afterward, but don't overdo it, okay? So we're gonna touch that toe back down and then bring the feet back in together. Good. Now I'm gonna have you exaggerate and take that heel out in front. So you're just rotating across your body. Good. Hands can ride on your hips, or if you want to, put them out here and cross them as well. And this is great for your brain. And I mentioned that a few times, but we need to, right? <laughs> let's, let's eat our blueberries and cross the arms and the legs across the midline. When you do this, it kind of helps you rewire your right and your left brain. Right brain is notorious for creativity. Your left brain a little bit more for analytical work, okay? And while you're exercising, if the two of those are talking to each other so much better, you're actually gonna support and boost your memory. You're gonna boost a lot of things. When you come up like this, I want you to do something, make sure you're not feeling any strain in the lower back. So as soon as we raise the arms up and up, definitely up here, we tend to arch the back. So I want you to engage a little bit. Now, I don't want you to shut down, but I just want you to feel like you're dressed for church, you have your shirt tucked in, and you are gonna reach to the top shelf. You don't want your shirt to get untucked and have to do that all over again, right? So what you're gonna do is kind of sew this together. You're gonna move from the joint up here, but not here, right, and open up. And that's what you want to be thinking whenever you raise your arms overhead. Strength training, stretching, or otherwise. Relax. All right. Nice job. I'm going to have you bring your knees up. And notice they're crossing the body. So bring it across you. If you're tight, you're going to get a little stretch through the hips here. Dynamic. We're not really holding it yet. But I'm going to ask you to hold it. Okay? So we're going to go slow. I want you to think about it. And when you're ready... You're going to bring one knee up, and I want you to capture it and hold it. And hold it. Yes, you can. Push that foot down into the floor. So you're going to stretch and strengthen at the same time. Drop your shoulders down away from your ears. Good. Another side, and this is more a stretch through your glutes of the leg that you're holding, holding it towards you. And it's also a little test, right? So push your foot into the floor that you're standing on, and you may have a hip flexor stretch right in the front of your hips where your jeans pocket would be if you had them on. Relax. Let that go. Now you take your arms up. Reach over to one side, and as you reach over to one side, leave your feet right there in the middle. Keep equal weight on them. Get to get a good lateral stretch. Bring it up. We're going to take it to the other side. Keep your weight evenly distributed right there. And then relax. Now, bring your feet together. I'm just going to back up a little bit. Now, drop your head on your hands. This one you may recognize from yoga, from Facebook at voting50.com TV. And bring this one up. Lateral stretching, so good. And we sometimes forget this one. We do a lot of forward and back and cat-cow rotation, but a little less so this way. And you want to remember that key term. You're only as young as your spine is flexible. So let's come down 
So yes, cat cow. We can do this on all fours on the floor, or you can do it right here. So let me tell you what I'm feeling, what you may feel. Rounding up, you want to really lift, bring your ribs and your hips close together, and then exhale, and you're going to allow your belly to drop down. There's an arch in the small of your back. Your tailbone is really reaching back, and my weight to my heels. And because I'm just a little bit tight, my hamstrings. I'm feeling a stretch right here, and you may be, but if you're very flexible and you know that about yourself, you may not feel a stretch. So there's no right or wrong place to feel it. Exhale, come in the opposite direction, take the crown of your head down, and then release. And I'm gonna have you roll all the way up. Roll this. We're gonna do a small stretch for the hamstring, small and gentle. So as we do this in a standing position, Really what I'm doing here is you need to know this is leverage, right? So I'm digging the heel and I'm pulling the toe up. So I'm stretching the back of the calf a bit, hamstrings, hip, maybe through your lower back, depending on where you need it. But this front foot is really not weight bearing. There's a little bit there, but I'm really putting the weight on this standing leg. So if you're being like, my weight is up here, I'm actually lifting that leg up. You've got to get back here. And if you need something for support, please grab it and that'll help you. And then release, bend your knee, round up through the back. We'll do the other side. So foot comes out, sit back, chin and chest are up, lengthen forward. So if you take your sternum forward and your tailbone back, you've got a little push pull that increases the stretch. You don't need to come down. What you don't absolutely want to do is this. So this is rounding the corner, right? You want to stick that hip out because the muscle crosses that joint so you get a better stretch. And then release. Toes are down and relax. Now, for those of you that are walking outside, I'm going to use something for balance because this is not an easy one. Toes down and you can drag that foot towards you to get a stretch through the front of those shins. So when you come back from a walk where you're going uphill, you may want to do that one regularly. Take the toe, you can just gently press down or you can drag that toe toward you and you'll get a stretch through the front of the shin. Very important that we're stretching the calves as well, but almost all of us know to do that. We're used to doing that. Press down, do it with a straight leg and do it with a bent knee, but with the foot flat, tailbone tucked under, and there you have it. That is it. So a very short, about 20 minute with a little bit of a warm up and a little bit of a stretch on the end. So I'd love to hear how that goes for you. Let me know if you have questions about anything I've said about warming up and the ankles. Great. Okay. 